Abu Dhabi Dude! Hi there, this is Abu Dhabi Dude! Welcome back. It's another Techie Talk today. And it's actually another Car Link It video today. Um, now, apologies for that. It's kind of become a bit of a Car Link It channel at the moment. But uh, this was too exciting to wait. Ordinarily, I would have waited a few weeks because I did the Car Link It 3 video a, a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago ordinarily I would wait a few weeks for that or to follow it up with this video but I had to get this done I'm quite excited by this one because Carlink it have got a new product coming out it's not actually on sale yet but it goes on sale on the 22nd of October so you'll be able to get it um, and if you stick around to the end I'll include details of how to buy it with the with my discount code as well um, but what is the new product? What's got me so excited? Um, it is this. And this is the Carlinkit uh, AI box, they call it. AI box. Let me. Uh, and it is, yes, it does wireless CarPlay. Yes, it does wireless CarPlay. But it also... Uh, does a lot of other things as well, really well. So I wouldn't be this excited if it was just another CarPlay dongle. But it has two unique selling points that make it better than a wireless CarPlay dongle. One, uh, and a lot of you I know will be quite excited about this because I get quite a lot of questions about this. Every time I do a car link it uh, video, I get questions about, does it do Android? This does Android Auto. So you get wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, which as far as I know is unique. I think this is the only product I know that's doing that at the moment. Could be wrong, but it's the only one I know of. Um, now, the third thing that it does, the second new thing, but the third thing that it does which is the thing that's got me most excited is as well as carplay android auto wirelessly it has a built-in android 9.0 operating system now car link it do something really clever with this uh, um it's just magic as far as i'm concerned but what they do is they piggyback on the carplay apk basically and use that to put android 9.0, not Android Auto or Android Mobile, Android 9.0 onto your in-car touchscreen. Now, some of you will already be rubbing your hands together in glee at this, um, but some of you are probably sitting there going, and? What it means is, it's got full Google Play Store access. So, you can download apps from the Google Play Store and run them on your in-car touchscreen. What does that mean? Well, that means now you can have the Tesla experience. If you're sitting at a charger, waiting on your car charging, maybe having a drink, something to eat, you can now watch Netflix. You can watch Amazon Prime, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, uh, Disney Plus. So not only is it the Tesla experience, it's the better than Tesla experience because any streaming service that's got an Android app should be runnable on this. So you haven't just got access to, I think at the moment it's Disney Plus and Netflix on the Tesla system. This will run anything that's got a streaming app. So there you go. I'm quite excited by it and I hope it's going to be as good as it sounds. Um, few features to just quickly tell you about. It's got 64 gigabytes built in of storage, um, but it also has an SD card reader, micro SD card reader, which you can add up to, I think it's another 128 gigabytes of storage. And it's got a built in SIM slot. So you can uh, put your SIM card in there or a SIM card in there to access data. However, you can also just tether it to your phone. Obviously, if you're using Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay, it will automatically use your phone's data because that's how CarPlay works. But if you're using the Android 9 feature, you either need to tether it to a phone or um, 
put in a SIM card with a data plan. Uh, my plan is to use it tethered to my phone, but I'll see if that proves tricky, then I might just get uh, a SIM card for it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, all there is to say on the product, other than the price. There's always a downside, it's not cheap. However, when you look at what you're actually getting, it is cheap. This thing has a full Qualcomm Snapdragon chip in there. Um, the fact that it's got a SIM card means it's also got a 4G modem, a data card, a SD card reader. You know, this thing's got a lot of tech in there. So I'm starting with that because the full retail price is £320. But basically what you're getting for that is pretty much, I was going to say you're getting a smartphone without a touchscreen, but you're kind of getting two smartphones in a way because of the Android Auto CarPlay situation. But the Android 9.0 is pretty much, let's say a tablet rather than a smartphone. It's like a tablet without a touchscreen on it because you're going to use the car's touchscreen. So I don't think £320 is a lot, but it's not cheap for a car accessory I do get that however at the moment uh, you will be able to get it for uh, 40 pounds off that with combination of discount codes which I'll go through at the end of the video um, but you'll be able to get it for 280 at the moment uh, through my channel so let's quickly have an unboxing uh, and have a look you get the uh, it's quite a nice little box it's black just to contrast it from the uh, from the car link it ones, the, the, the normal CarPlay dongles, which come in a sort of Apple-esque white box. This is a black box, quite premium feeling. Take the sleeve off, open the box up, and you get the probably familiar to you by now, double-sided instruction leaflet. And there's the English on one side and I presume that's Mandarin Chinese on the other, but I'm not sure. But there you go, two-sided uh, leaflet with everything you need to know about setting it up. So, as with the other products, it looks quite simple, but we'll go through that in a minute. And then, underneath that, you get the, oh, quite tightly packed in the box, but there we go. You get the CarLinkit device itself. Um, you see it says there, full Android system. Um, there's the slots for the card reader and the SIM card. And uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, so that's the actual device itself. And then you get two USB uh, cables for it. A USB-C, which you'll need if you've got a model year 2122 iPACE. And a USB-A one which you will need if you've got a model year 1920 iPACE like I have. Right, so that's what's in the box. Let's get it out to the car and get it going. I'm actually really genuinely excited to see this one up and running. Um, I do have to stress, I forgot to put this disclaimer at the start. This is not a, prom a promoted video, it's not a sponsored video. Carlink have sent me the product for free, but other than that, I've received no form of remuneration for this review. Um, so yeah, having said all that and covered myself legally, let's get out to the car, get it plugged in, and see if it's as cool as I really hope it is going to be. All right, so we're out in the car. Um, let's get it plugged in. So get the center console open, as usual. Okay, so we've got the uh, USB-A cable here because uh, that's the one I need for my model year 19 iPACE. Uh, and the box, plug the USB into that socket there. And then, again, as usual, has to be one of the two sockets in the center armrest area. One of the two blue ones there. Either one will do, but they're the ones that are connected to CarPlay. So if we hook that in there, and then have a look at the screen. <laughs> Okay, now it's popped up with, uh, do you want to start this device with Apple CarPlay? I'm guessing that's what I need to do, so I'll click on that. Um, what now? 
Okay, seems to be some kind of touchscreen calibration system now, so let's let's activate that. Okay. That's not ideal. But let's unplug it, plug it back in again. That fixes everything. Turn it off and on again. Right, there we go. Looks promising. And oh, wow. Wow. There it is. Android 9. Point zero. Um, now, interestingly, it comes preloaded with a few apps, I noticed there. Uh, straight away, I can see they've put Netflix and YouTube on it already. What else have we got? Bluetooth music, YouTube music, Chrome, Google Maps. There's a few settings you're going to want to adjust first for this, well, need to adjust first for this. Um, so, starting off, if we go into the AI boxes settings uh, menu, you can see there, top left of the screen. Um, in there, first thing that you'll need to do is go down to the uh, network uh, settings there. Turn your Wi-Fi on and connect to a Wi-Fi network. Unless you've got a SIM card in the AI box, in which case it will just use that internet connection. But it does need an internet connection the first time you launch the CarPlay slash Android Auto part of it because it it goes online to enable it. Um, it's just a momentary thing but it connects and enables the software. Not sure why it works that way but just trust me it works that way. So you will need, if you haven't got a SIM card in the box, you need to either tether it to your phone or connect to a Wi-Fi network first. So I'll do that now. Um, I'll connect to the car's Wi-Fi hotspot because I've got about uh, 23 gigs of data a month in the car. So I'm just going to do it that way. I'm going to tether it to the car. Uh, so you go into the uh, Wi-Fi. I'll type in my password. You don't need to see that. Not that it really matters because you'd have to park next to my car when it was switched on in order to use it but anyway i'm still gonna hide it so there um so yeah so uh then you wait for it to connect connects and then the first time you use your uh carplay or android auto it will briefly use the internet to enable that system on the on the ai box so uh having done that the next thing you're going to want to look at is the auto kit t box settings uh, you can see that there in the settings menu um, and as you go through that first thing you're going to want to do is enable use the oem gps data because what that does is it uses the gps data that the car provides from the shark fin antenna on the roof rather than using your gps signal on your phone or rather not on the phone but on the AI box itself. Now if you've got the AI box in the centre console with the lid shut inside the eye pace which is not a great place for GPS signals at the best of times I don't know if you've noticed that or not but the chances of that box receiving a GPS signal shut away inside the centre console there are pretty slim I suspect so by using or by enabling use the OEM Enabling, use the OEM GPS data. That's easy for me to say. Um, that overrides that and uses the car's uh, GPS position. Um, so make sure that's enabled. And then if you scroll up, there's a few things you can do there. You can see uh, the boot up app. Uh, that one uh, is very useful because what that's going to do is decide what app boots up when the AI box first boots up when you first turn your car on in other words um, so if I go in there if I scroll down that list you can see auto kit there now this gives you an option you can either enable auto kit so that 
when the car boots up it will then automatically go into either Android Auto or wireless CarPlay whichever one you use um, or you can set something else you know you could set any app that's on the AI box to come up automatically once it boots up but by setting it to auto kit it means you don't have to press several buttons to get it into CarPlay or Android Auto it will just automatically boot up in that mode so I've set it up for that um, then for voice assist now this one is quite important for voice assist if you scroll through again you see auto kit there now what that means is by setting it to auto kit it will divert the voice assist function to your Android Auto or CarPlay so if you don't have it set for auto kit it means that when you press the voice command button on your steering wheel you'll get the Google Assistant from the AI box coming up on your screen if you set it to auto kit and you're in let's say wireless CarPlay then pressing the voice command button a long press on the steering wheel button will bring up Siri instead so that's almost certainly how you're going to want to use this so set voice assist to auto kit important tip um, and then for navigation app set up you can have a default navigation app whatever one you you want to use I'm not going to bother setting that up at all because I'm not going to use the AI box in that way I'll use Apple CarPlay and the AI box is just going to be a secondary thing really for video streaming and stuff when I'm when I'm sitting in the car waiting for charging or, or whatever um, so that's my setup I've got auto kit for boot up an auto kit for voice assist and nothing for navigation up let's try and get Apple CarPlay up on it now to do that on the first page see this auto kit app on the bottom left here that's the one that allows you to uh, go to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay So if I just show you my phone now, you can see it's running. Uh, that's my settings on my iPhone. It's detecting AutoKit T-Box, which is this device. So if I tap on that, would you like to pair your phone? Pair. Allow contacts and favorites sync. I'm going to allow AutoKit T-Box. Connecting, use CarPlay, and that's just going to take a minute to come up. But um, and people are always interested, Oops. like, well, my wife plugged it in and it's only charging at twenty degrees, uh, twenty uh, kilowatts, and then it jumps up. Sorry, that's for a couple of minutes and then drops off. Like, why is there yeah. a charger? There we go. Sorry, that was the Take It EV podcast which I was listening to. Nice one, Greg. Uh, that's a nice podcast for anyone that's uh, interested. They usually get some interesting guests and stuff um, and cover some really interesting subjects. Now, interestingly, it's running in left-hand drive mode, if you notice. All the touch icons are over on the left side of the screen. Now, that's interesting. So, it seems to be thinking that it's in uh, a left-hand drive car so I'm gonna have to have a look at that in a minute but there you go that's anyway there's Apple CarPlay running you can see that's running absolutely fine and the solution to that is if you run auto kit then click on that little settings icon at the top left um, you can do a few things you can choose your car's model which will change the icon on the car menu it's a bit pointless to be honest it doesn't achieve very much but you can change it obviously to the best one which is Jaguar but the solution to the driver left hand drive right hand drive is that driver position menu there change that to right and uh, and that will change it then so that once you're in CarPlay or Android Auto uh, the the menu will be the right way around for you 
And then just to show you the pairing for Android Auto, it's very similar. Get your Android Auto phone, uh, switch to the connected devices, pair new device, and that will go into your Bluetooth pairing. You're then looking for Auto Kit T Box, and then uh, pair. And then once you've clicked on pair, you'll see the screen changes. You get the Android Auto logo with the spinning circle around it. And then once it's paired, you go into the Welcome to Android Auto, click on OK, then click on Continue. Um, and once you've done that, there you go, Android Auto comes up. And much like CarPlay, um, you just get all your Android Auto apps there. So there's, for example, Google Maps running. Um, oops, sorry, went to the wrong menu there. But there's Google Maps running. Um, and that's the rest. That's gone well then. Ah, there you go. That's the, uh, the home button on the bottom right. Um, but there's all your Google apps running there. And obviously you've got more installed. This is just a basic installation. But if you've got more installed, um, then they would all show up there. But that's the, that's the, the process for, for pairing Android Auto. The next thing you're possibly going to want to do is change the wallpaper. Uh, that's quite easy to do. Uh, you see on my first page there at the bottom right is a, an icon marked Snapdragon Gallery. If you tap on that, see there's a few presets there. You can use any picture you want if you put it onto the AI box, but these are the built-in ones. Um, at the moment this is the default one, that sort of purple and blue thing. But I'm going to change it to this uh, cloudy sky image because I quite like that. Uh, or sort of, yeah, let's call it cloudy sky image sort of sunset or sunrise. So you tap on the uh, image, picture comes up, tap on the little three dots at the top right, you can see set picture as. If you then tap on wallpaper, it comes up and then there's a little tick at the top right that says set wallpaper, top left sorry, which says set wallpaper. Tap on that and then if you go back home, there you are, um, it's back to uh, or rather it's changed the wallpaper to, to that image. I quite like that one, quite goes with the interior of the car as well. It's fairly subtle, not too in your face. So um, so yeah, the, that's uh, something else you might want to do. Uh, other than that, really, it's just a case then of playing with the apps, doing what you want. Let's, um, let's have a look at, well, let's have a look at Netflix, shall we? So if I load up Netflix, and there you go, let's pick something to watch. I'm going to turn the volume down to try and avoid any copyright issues. Um, but let's, uh, well, there's Spider Man, that'll be a good demonstration of it. Get that playing. And there you go. Looks nice. <laughs> that looks really nice, actually. Oh, this is going to be so good. I can't wait for a charging stop. I hope they don't improve the charging curve on this car now. Joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that's uh, Netflix. Um, let's have a look at YouTube. Um, okay. Fire up YouTube. And then, obviously, let's uh, search for the only channel you should be watching on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> Call out one of my videos. Let's have the one year review thing. Oh no, sorry, the model year 21 review thing. Uh, there we go. Abu Dhabi dude! Hello, this is Abu Dhabi dude. Welcome back. And today, yeah, excellent, brilliant. Um, so that's it really. I mean, I've put on all sorts of apps now. I've got BBC iPlayer, Prime Video, Now TV, all four. Have I got My5? Yep, My5. 
Um, so yeah, you you know they're all on there. That's going to be my primary use for it. So um, for that reason, I've got it set up to boot up into Apple CarPlay because that's what I use when I'm driving the car. But then a, a press to go back one takes you know press on the car menu uh, option or the car icon rather, um, and that will take me back into AI Box if I'm at a charger or whatever and want to watch some telly. Uh, yeah, I think that is absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, now, I have been using this for a few days now. Um, I've been running it, using it, playing with it, seeing what it what it does uh, and what it doesn't do for that matter. And there's a few things that I love about it, a few things that um, are maybe suboptimal, uh, a couple of which I'm already in discussions with uh, Carl Linkit, the, the people who make it, to see if there's a way around it. Um, but let's start. The, the, the best part of it, well, if you haven't already got wireless CarPlay and you're a CarPlay user, it adds wireless CarPlay. That's brilliant. That's great to see. Love wireless CarPlay. It's completely changed my use in the car. I mean, it, it sounds like a small thing, but it actually makes a surprisingly big difference just in your day-to-day -day user experience if you like um, now if you've got Android Auto if you're an Android user this is one of the first options available really the, there might be a few others by now but this is the first one I've been aware of but then I'm not an Android user so I'm not keeping an eye out for that but it gives you wireless Android Auto um, which assuming it's as good as wireless CarPlay is going to be brilliant and again it will change if your experience is like mine anyway, it will change how you interact with the car and it will improve your uh, your, your overall experience. Um, so that's the first thing we love is wireless Android Auto CarPlay. Um, now some of you might already have the CarLink at 2.0 or 3.0 in which case you've already got wireless CarPlay. Um, but if you haven't, it's a brilliant addition. Uh, so that's the first thing we really love. Next thing that I love is the uh, addition of just the AI box itself. The fact that it natively runs Google 9.0, Google Android 9.0. Um, it does it very cleverly on the back of the uh, CarPlay APK. So basically, it runs on the screen. It gives you access to all those streaming video channels. Interestingly, I said at the beginning, I think I mentioned Disney Plus as being one, but for some reason, Disney Plus isn't available on the Google Play Store for this device. I don't know why, so you can't do Google uh, Disney Plus. But you've got BBC iPlayer, Netflix, which comes pre-installed, Prime Video, Now TV, my, all four, anything. Dave? Oh, I must put Dave on there. Anyway, plus YouTube. Spotify, whatever. And in fact, you could run this really as your whole system. You wouldn't even need to use wireless Android Auto in a way if you just set this up and used uh, Android, you know, used the um, native Google Maps app, for example, or downloaded whatever app you wanted, Waze or whatever. So you can use it really as a standalone uh, Android Auto system, basically, although it's actually Android, not Android Auto. So I like, I like that. That's a nice option for people. For me, um, CarPlay through and through, so I'm, I'm sticking with that. Um, but you know, I like the fact that it, that it's got Google. I keep saying that Android 9.0 built in, so you've got all of those apps open to you. Uh, for me, it's the video streaming primarily. You could download games to it and play games while you're charging as well. I believe you can even pair it with like a Bluetooth uh, video game controller um, and play games that way on the car screen. But for me, it's the videos and the car screen is beautiful for watching videos. It's a really good quality uh, screen in the iPace and it's really nice for watching those videos. Um, so really like that. Um, and I guess on to what don't we like about it? I don't know why I keep saying we here, by the way. 
Um, I've suddenly become the Queen for some reason. Um, we are not amused by the following features. Uh, one downside, which I think is a bit of a safety issue, is it doesn't disable when the car's moving. So people could be watching things while driving, and I don't like that. I would like them to have some sort of lockout system in place, so that if the car is moving or in gear or whatever they can detect from it, it stops the video streaming. That's what I would like to see. Um, so I'm not keen on that one. Uh, and the other one I'm not so keen on really is that it's if you want to get back into your Jaguar infotainment system, it's now an extra step. So now you have to, if you're in, let's say, CarPlay, you have to press the icon button at the bottom right to go back to your home page, then press the car button on the home page. That will take you back into AI box. You then have to press the car button on the AI box screen that will then take you back into Jaguar and then you can access the Jaguar systems like the cameras and stuff and so that's quite a lengthy process to go from CarPlay right back to your car menu there's an extra step in there to where it would be with car likes of the wired CarPlay or using the CarLink at 2.0 or 3.0 um, it would be nice to be able to set it somehow. I don't know if there's any way of doing that, but it would be nice to be able to set it, I guess, to jump straight back to the car. But then, if it did that, you wouldn't have a way of getting back to AI box if you set it to auto boot into CarPlay. So maybe that's just something that we will have to live with. Um, but it is an extra step and makes it slightly more cumbersome than the uh, 3.0 and 2.0 in that sense if you're just doing a parking maneuver or whatever and you quit or you're at a junction which you can't see that well out of and you quickly want to jump to your iPace's uh, cameras you know the front left right camera view um, that's quite a lengthy process now so yeah so that's a bit of a downside the other thing that doesn't work as well I'll put a few photos in to show you what I mean now but on the 2.0 and 3.0, if you're using CarPlay, you still get the uh, media information in the lower touch screen and the car dashboard if you've got them set up for media display. Um, so you can still see the tracks and you can still pause, fast forward, etc. from that lower touch screen. The AI box doesn't do that. You just get a blank display on the car dashboard and the lower touch screen says Apple CarPlay but you get no media information on it and the soft keys for pause, forward and backwards don't do anything and likewise the controls on the, da on the steering wheel sorry, don't do anything so you can't pause it with the shortcut key or forward or rewind with the forward and rewind buttons and you can't hang up the phone either with the steering wheel phone button. Now I've spoken to them about this, I'm hoping they'll be able to find a, a software update at some point that does that but at the time of publication just be aware that you lose some of the functionality that all works with the 2.0 and the 3.0 so I suspect that they will uh, be able to work. Um, but, we'll, you know, as I say, if you buy it now, just be aware of that. So, uh, that's the, the likes and don't likes of it. Um, now, the big question, should you part with money for it? Well, there's a, there's, there's a two-parter to this. If you've got the car link at 2.0, 3.0, you've already got the wireless CarPlay functionality, assuming you're an Apple user. Well, you must be an Apple user if you bought it. Um, so you don't gain anything from that and really all you gain is the video, the, the Android operating system, so the ability to put videos and apps on your car screen. If you do a lot of public charging, then I would say yeah, it's worth it for that. I mean it's not cheap, but you will get money off with my discount code, um, which I'll come to in a minute. But it is a little bit, um, you know, it. it 
it's still an expensive item. Basically, retail is three twenty, but you can get it for two eighty at the moment with a combination of a voucher on Amazon that's there automatically and my twenty pound discount code. So you can get it for two hundred and eighty, which is actually not a bad price when you consider this has got a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor in it and sixty four gigs of built in storage space. You know, this is not a, a low end device. I mean, it's almost a sort of fairly high-end smartphone really just without the screen element of it it's quite a sophisticated bit of kit so you're going to expect to pay for that I suppose um, but if you've already got the wireless carplay functionality of the 2.0 3.0 it's only worth it if you're going to use that video streaming or games or whatever a lot to be honest with you if you don't have the 2.0 3.0 yet um, now, bear in mind, you can get the 3.0 for about £80 at the moment with my discount code. If you go and check out my 3.0 review, uh, you can you can get the discount code from there. So you can get that for £80 or this for £280. Um, again, well, if you want wireless Android Auto, it has to be this for a start. So if you're an Android Auto user and you want wireless Android Auto, you're looking at this system. Um, so, you know, only you can decide if £280 is a reasonable budget for you or not. I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's a good little bit of kit. It's a nice little device, to be honest. Um, the, the video streaming is brilliant. The quality is really good, although it does depend on your data signal. If you have weak data, you'll get a lower resolution picture, but that's, that's just the way these things operate. Um, bear in mind, because it sees it as a Google device uh, on likes of Netflix, you can actually download videos as well. So you could download it before you go on a trip, download maybe one or two movies or TV shows or whatever, um, and then they would download it full resolution and you wouldn't be relying on a data signal. So that's important to note. But, um, but yeah, I think the quality is brilliant. The interface is really good. A few niggles at the moment. I don't like that you lose the functionality of the steering wheel and the displays of that lower touch screen and the dashboard display of, of what's playing at the moment. I use that a lot and I like that. So it's a shame that that's missing. Hopefully that will come though. Um, but all in all, it's a thumbs up for me. I would, I'd really do recommend it. Um, I'm hoping they can fix those... Uh, display issues with those the dashboard and the touchscreen but don't buy it hoping that they will fix it if that is going to bug you you know never buy something in the hopes that it's going to be improved i mean you know i'm trying to avoid commenting on full self-driving here <laughs> but you know the people that paid thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars for that in 2015 2016 thinking it was going to be soon so don't buy it if that's really important to you wait to find out if they fix it and if they do fix it i'll let you know i'll do a little video just to let you know of improvements going forward but be aware of that situation at the moment and that's a pity but other than that there's very few downsides the extra step to jump back uh, to the uh, cars infotainment is a bit of a pain but I can see why it is that way because you want to be able to get into the AI boxes menu and you can't really do that if you're always bypassing it in both directions. So it does make sense now, but, um, but that's a minor downside. Very minor. Other than that, beautiful bit of kit. It's much smaller than I thought it was going to be from the pictures that they sent me prior to sending me the device. It looked bigger. It's really small um, and very neat. Um, yeah, not much more to say. It's a thumbs up from me. Definitely like it. I do recommend it with that small caveat about the displays. It isn't cheap, but you do get quite a lot for your money in, in all honesty. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Pointless, good but too expensive, or well worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget, as ever, to like, subscribe, and share with your friends, um, all of which usually helps the channel. Uh, so, I guess, till next time, this has been a long one. 
Abba dabby dude, saying, so long, take care, see you soon. Bye. Abba dabby dude.